Hey everyone, I'm Aaron Dewald. I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Innovation and Legal Education at the SJ Quinney College of Law. And I want to thank you for checking out this video series on item analysis. Now I want to mention something that I didn't in the lead-in video. This whole series is based on questions of multiple choice, not essay. Now you can probably do many of these calculations on essay style questions, but it's probably a little bit more difficult. Now the nice thing about multiple choice questions is that they're relatively easy to write, can be updated and changed, and can be graded automatically by testing software. So please keep that in mind throughout this entire video series. So why do we even want to look at these metrics? Well, remember our goal is to create a test with the minimum amount of questions that does the best job at measuring some level of understanding of the students taking the quiz. We're looking at item difficulty, item discrimination, and response distribution as ways to determine which questions are best and which ones should be used on an exam, and also which ones should be removed or fixed. All of this information is presented to help you put together the best formative and summative assessments possible. Today, we're going to talk about item difficulty. Now, it's a simple calculation, but it's a powerful indicator to how our questions are performing. Item difficulty is a simple yet powerful tool to look at how our students are answering the questions. Simply put, it's how difficult this particular question was for our students based on how many got it right and how many got it wrong. To calculate, it's simply the number of students who got the item correct divided by the total number of students who answered the item. The number that's returned gives you the proportion of students who answered it correctly. So, if 78 out of 100 students answered a particular question correctly, the difficulty is said to be 0.78. Another example would be that if we know that 35% of the students who took the question got it correct, then the difficulty level for that question is said to be 0.35. Now you're going to see a range of numbers from zero which means that the question was insanely difficult and nobody got it right, to one, which means that it was very easy and everyone got it correct. Now, very generally speaking, we want our item difficulty to be somewhere in the range of 0.4 to 0.6, but it really depends on how we're using the test. If we're looking for a normal distribution of scores, a bell curve, then generally we'll want our difficulties in that range. I say generally because you'll never hear anyone commit to a hard and fast number. But since we're just starting out, let's aim for this range of scores. Now, if we're really, really low, like below 0.3 low, then the question is way too hard. If we're really high, like over 0.8 really high, then the question is far too easy. These questions won't add much to the test's reliability and should probably be used sparingly. If students are allowed to answer the questions multiple times, which is true in some circumstances, especially with asynchronous online environments, we'll want to make sure that when we're calculating item difficulty, we take their first attempt. We would assume that students will perform better on an item the more times they've seen it. So the first attempt might be an accurate representation of the actual difficulty of the question. We could also look at what the difficulty of the question was on the first trial and then compare it to the difficulty on the second trial. This might also give us some idea of how students are improving as they take the assessment multiple times and indicate to us how quick they're picking it up or, I suppose, memorizing the answers. Let's clarify one thing, though. Item difficulty has a lot loaded into it, right? I mean, it could honestly be a difficult or an easy question, but it could also be horribly written or a convoluted question. It could have horrible distractors. So it's a good first indicator, but unless you've really critically analyzed this question before, you'll probably want to look at other indicators to see how the question is truly performing. Okay, this is all great. So let's look at some examples and then we'll talk about them. So here we have the results for five questions on a quiz. The first column on the left represents the question number. The second column shows the number of people who correctly answered the question. Column three is the total number of people who tried to answer the question. The final column is the number of correct answers divided by the total responses, the question's 
item difficulty. Using our general rule of thumb, but remember, this isn't a hard and fast rule. Questions one and three are great questions. They're in a range of 0.4 to 0.6. Question two isn't a bad question either. It's just over our rule of thumb, but remember, we're comfortable adding questions up to 0.8 if we need to. Question four is insanely difficult and probably needs to be looked at more closely if not removed entirely. And question five is a very, very easy question and could probably use a check if it's not a mastery or a building confidence style question. Now, as I mentioned, item difficulty is a great starting point. We can quickly find trouble questions by simply checking the difficulty level. If we're not happy with what we see, then we can turn to some other calculations that might shed some more insight into the performance of the questions.